While the world is battling COVID-19 in the state of California, firefighters have been battling raging fires. Over 18 fires have been burning for the past two weeks. And so far, a million and a half acres of land has been scorched and torched with these raging fires. On Sunday, a plane full of firefighters from Israel landed in Sacramento, California to help the California firefighters battle these fires during COVID-19 when there's a shortage of firefighters available to fight these raging flames. Israel is the first and the only country thus far to have sent firefighters to help put out these flames. In this week's Torah portion, the Jew would bring his first fruit to the Holy Temple and declare his gratitude to God for bringing us to the land of Israel and the Holy Temple and giving him his plentiful, bountiful harvest, which he gives to the Kohen as an expression of gratitude. And when the Jew brought his first fruit, he recounted the misery and the suffering of the Jews in the land of Egypt and how God took us from slavery to freedom in the land of Israel. And when the Jew talked about the suffering in Egypt, the Jews said, Vayareu osanu hamitzrim. The Egyptians m made us evil. It doesn't say, Vayareu lanu, they did evil to us. It says, Vayareu osanu, they made us evil. The commentaries say, what does that mean? And the commentaries say, yes, the Egyptians did evil to us. Indeed, they enslaved us for hundreds of years. They drowned our babies in the Nile. But how did they manage to convince the entire, the entire Egyptian population to drown innocent babies in the Nile? Now, rabbis say that first they made us evil. They depicted us as evil. They portrayed us as evil. And by depicting Jews as being inhumane, subhuman, being less than the rest of the society, being a fifth column, accusing them of not being loyal. They were able to turn the Egyptians against the Jews and no longer see them as worthy of life. And this has been the tactic in every generation. They portray us as being evil. And then the world has no compassion for us. That's what happened in Nazi Germany. In order for Hitler to be able to get the German people to go along with his evil plan to murder six million men, women, and children. He first had to depict the Jews in the media of being greedy, of being uh, controlling, of being the ones who manipulate the society and control the world, and being subhuman, depicting them in caricatures that make them look like less than human. And then, just like you don't have mercy when you kill a cockroach, you go ahead tragically and murder innocent Jews because you don't see them as equal, as worthy of life. And this has been the tactic in every generation. By Sunday, they make us seem evil, and then they're able to do evil to us. And this has been the tactic of the Arab world as well. As you know, our students are going back to college campuses, uh, starting the new semester now. And one of the things Jewish students have been facing for years on college campuses is the BDS movement, calling for the boycott, divestment, and sanctions against the state of Israel. The only country in the world that there's a BDS movement against. The only free democracy in the Middle East. And yet it's Israel. Why? Because when Jews are made to feel ashamed of who they are, when the world is told Israel are, is a country that is occupied, that they're... they're, they're persecuting the Palestinians, that they are not, uh, they're, they're, they're a roadblock and an obstacle to peace, then their world is willing to boycott the vest and sanction and even bring physical violence against the Jewish state. And that is why another historic flight that took place just yesterday and today is so significant. Yesterday, for the first time ever in the history of Israel, an El Al plane with the word Shalom in Hebrew, in English, and in Arabic, with an American, Israeli, and a United Arab Emirates flag, flew from Ben Gurion to Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. And the flight was flight 971, because it was a tribute to the United Arab Emirates, whose country code is 971. And on the plane were high-ranking Israeli and Arab uh, officials, delegation, and they were welcomed by the crown prince and they had talks about opening up embassies in their respective countries. And this morning, just hours ago, the flight returned and landed in Ben Gurion once again with an Arab and Israeli delegation. Flight number 972, which is the country code of Israel, landing and being welcomed with great joy and celebration in the land of Israel. And as Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law who was on the flight said, it is 100% realistic to 
hope and to believe that one day all 22 Arab countries will have peaceful relations with Israel and that we, our future should not be determined by our past. But what this shows the world once again, for those who choose to forget, is that Israel is a peace-loving country. Israel wants peace. And this gives our youngsters, our youth, and every Jew the courage to no longer believe the lies of the world that is hurled against Israel as being oppressors, God forbid, or being unwilling to make peace with its neighbors. This reminds the world again that Israel is always welcome welcomes a warm hand and a warm embrace of our neighbors and wants nothing more than to live in peace and to be a light unto the nations. Whether those nations live in the Middle East region or whether those neighbors are in the state of California, Israel sees the entire world as one family, brothers and sisters, who must live together in peace and harmony and help one another. And that's why as Jews we should hold our heads high and tall and proud and never allow anyone to ever make us seem anything less than what we are, which is a good and a righteous nation. Have a wonderful day.